So I changed, uh, I had a really interesting talk all prepared and uh, it kind of changed <laughs> in the last couple days. And yesterday, uh, the minister's listserv received a, a declaration from the Centers for Spiritual Living talking about this um, issue that we're dealing with in the world. And I wanted to read some of it because it's important for you all to understand that, that we are um, part of this larger organization and what they're holding in consciousness. This is important. And then I'm going to do the second half of my talk because it actually still fits in. So it starts with a quote from Ernest Holmes, who's our founder of Science and Mind. Not only must we have complete faith in spirit and its ability to know and to do, but we must also have complete confidence in our approach to it. We must not be lukewarm in our conviction. We must know that we know. And this is from the Centers for Spiritual Living Spiritually Motivated Social Engagement Committee. That's a long word. Given the current level of escalation in Israel and Palestine, we bring our awareness and love to all of those touched by this crisis, to all who suffer. We are saddened by the attacks against the Israeli people carried out by Hamas. The loss of all forms. To quote the 13 leaders of Christian denominations that reside in, in Jerusalem, they say, we unequivocally con to condemn any acts that target civilians, regardless of their nationality, ethnicity, or faith. <coughs> Further, they say, we implore political leaders and authorities to engage in sincere, sincere dialogue, seeking lasting solutions that promote justice, peace, and reconciliation to the people of this land who have endured the burdens of conflict far too long. We pray too for a cessation of violence and for the rights of the Israelis and the Palestinians to live free from fear, violence, and war. As we explore the power of paradox this month in the Centers for Spiritual Living theme, we're aware of a war in, a, in the Holy Land. That's a paradox. We're aware that war and peace form the biggest paradox of all. How do we continue to know peace in the midst of war? We cannot move, they say, toward a more peaceful world until we address the underlying causes of violence, inequity, justice, colonialism, and oppression of all forms. Our founder, Ernest Holmes, declared the promise that comes from practicing a consciousness a conscious sense of union with the divine is a deep, abiding peace, even, even in the midst of personal or planetary changes. We can create, he says, a spiritual chain reaction which can bring peace in the midst of chaos. Hmm. So the committee says, what can we do? What can we do? We can unite in focusing the energy of love to bring peace to Israel and Palestine, to Ukraine, and to everywhere, everywhere on the earth where there's no peace, through the creation of an idea of spiritual chain reaction. Think about that. Allow the energies of peace, love, and harmony to rise up within you and become strong. Peace begins at the center of our own being, where instead of moving to fear, anger, and anxiety, we can choose to focus on the greater powers of love, peace, and harmony, which is what I did in the meditation, right? It's always our choice. So they say, we hold space for peace to be realized. We convene with peace vigils, prayer calls, we read sacred texts, and also engage in sacred activism. We band together to remind each other that there is an infinite and divine creative force of life that is truth and wholeness. We stay in constant prayer without ceasing to remember what we know, rekindle our sometimes dwindling faith, and continue to seek the light in, amid the dark abyss. However, finally, it is not enough to simply pray. We must act. Get involved in local agencies providing relief to refugees. Donate to reputable agencies working in the areas of the world where there is strife. 
We offer this prayer of comfort and truth as a collective show of peace and faith in the divine presence of love right in the midst of war. There's a power for good in the universe, and it is moving in and through me this day to bring peace, harmony, and good to all. The divine is everywhere present, especially and including in all spaces of war, conflict, and violence. We bless all who are impacted by conflict of any kind. We lift up peace in the midst of war. We pray no healing and comfort where it is needed right now. And in gratitude, we declare this truth collectively, and so it is. In love and solidarity, your spiritually motivated social engagement committee. <laughs> oh. Yeah. You know, it was so interesting when I got that message and I was looking at my notes about what I was going to talk about. What really came to me this morning in my meditation was doubt. That it's not for me to just pray and treat about peace but it's also for me to pray and treat about my doubt that it can happen. To remove that doubt. That there's nothing in me that can doubt that good will make its appearance in any situation. And if there is, I remove it. Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. That's that paradox of yes, we want to have peace, but we also have to notice when we doubt that we can have peace. Oh, it'll never happen over there. They've been fighting for thousands of years. Oh, I'll never uh, make any money because I never have. Oh, I, you know, where are we limiting ourselves in our everyday life? Where is that doubt blocking our good? So I just thought about that this morning. I was like, wow, there is a part of my consciousness that's the doubt that there will be peace. So I, for me, have to clean that up. At the same time, while I'm praying for peace. <laughs> so just, that's a little food for thought for everybody. That might be a good goal, wouldn't it? So I'm going to talk a little bit about consciousness. Because that has to do with our consciousness. And it's really wise for us to be curious. My talk title was Curious and Vulnerable. Well, when we can be curious when things aren't showing up in our life that we want to have happen, be curious about, hmm, where in my consciousness am I blocking it? Where do I doubt that I'm not worthy to receive it? Or whatever it is. Am I blocking my good health because I doubt I'll never be healthy? There's so many layers to that. So have you ever heard of David Hawkins? Yes. Anybody? Some of you are nodding. Well, he was the author of Power Versus Force, which was written a long time ago, not a long time, like 1995. And David Hawkins was a renowned spiritual teacher, psychiatrist, mathematician, physician, researcher, lecturer, and he developed what was called a map of consciousness. You can look it up on the internet. I printed it out today for me to look at, and I also made some copies. It's quite fascinating. And again, this is his theory, but it relates a lot to how we talk about consciousness in the science of mind teachings. <clears throat> so through his research of over, over 30 years, he found that approximately 87% of human beings calibrate at a collective energy level that weakens them. So what does that mean? 87% of human beings calibrate at a collective energy level that weakens them. What he discovered was that every word, <clears throat> every action, every emotion, every person, every group, everything can be calibrated as to its vibration. And we know about vibration and energy, and that's nothing new. But he had a way to actually calibrate it. A thousand being the highest, Christ would calibrate at a thousand. Twenty being the lowest vibe is shame. Can you guess what's right above shame? Anger. Anger. Guilt. Oh, They're like brother and sister. <laughs> but shame moves a person into an emotional state of humiliation a view of life being miserable, 
and despising everyone and wanting to eliminate. So there's a process that we go through in consciousness when we're in one of those states, he says. Apathy of guilt is a 30, apathy is 40, grief, then fear. And again, at the top is a thousand, and that's enlightenment. And just below enlightenment in the spiritual paradigm is peace. Then joy, then love, then acceptance. So his idea is as we move up the scale, we become more conscious. We make a difference. So even though he discovered 87% of human humanity calibrates at a state by their actions, they go lower and lower on the scale because they get stuck. Have you ever felt stuck? <laughs> but high energy vibration and conscious people like you, like me, what we do is actually counterbalance the negative effect of that low energy on the planet. He says if you didn't, the planet would have been gone a long time ago. And what is even more mind-blowing is it doesn't happen on a one-to-one -one ratio. The higher your individual consciousness, he says, and vibration, the more you have an effect on groups of low-energy vibrating people. So maybe if you're at a 600, you would have an effect on 30 or 40 people. And if you're up there with Christ, you'd obviously have a lot more effect. So 30 or 40 people were like, I don't talk to 30 or 40 people a day, but just think about it. You go in the grocery store. You're in a high vibe. Your energy field is affecting everything around you. You, you know when you walk, when, you're, when somebody comes up to you or in a room and they're in a grumpy mood or they're angry or they're pissed off, you can feel that, can't you? It's like, kind of like, whoa. Do, 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 do. <laughs> we feel that. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a feeling. So again, high energy conscious people actually counterbalance the negative effect of low energy people that that, generate, that are generated on the planet, and it doesn't happen on a one-to-one -one ratio. So the high, think about it. I mean, the higher your individual consciousness is, the more impact you are gonna have in affecting large groups of low energy people. <sighs> That's his theory, I mean, yay, right? Wow. <sighs> so if that doesn't inspire you to do your transformational work, <laughs> to do your practices, spiritual practices, to go out of your comfort zone. I don't know what will. <sighs> do what makes you happy. Do what makes you, what lights you up. Because happiness vibrates at a very high calibration. Yeah. We have to let our light shine. We have to let our lights shine. So think about how, how will you serve after hearing all that, how will you be in the world? How will you lead in love? How will you be able to forgive and open that channel, that divine light that is within you? So the map of consciousness, very fascinating idea. I invite you to pick up a copy and look it over. Use it in your prayer work. There's a story that I know we have spoken about many times here, but I'm going to say it again because it, it really is apropos for this idea. There was an elderly Cherokee, there was an elderly Cherokee who told his grandson, son, there is a battle between two wolves inside of us. One is evil. It is angry, jealous. It is greed, resentment, inferiority, lies. The other wolf inside is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, empathy, and truth. The little boy 
thought about it. And he asked, Grandfather, which wolf wins? And the old man quietly replied, the one you feed. The one you feed. So I invite you to close your eyes for a moment. Just take a breath. It's easy to lose hope when we see and hear stories of injustices that humans inflict upon each other. But let us remember to feed the wolf of hope, love, harmony, and peace in our minds and extend that light to anyone suffering from anywhere in the world, even our next door neighbor. Let us ask ourselves, what is mine to do? Who am I to be? How can I serve a greater good? We have to remember that nothing changes until we change. We have to be the change, demonstrate the change, and embody the change that we want to see. So that's my call to action for each of us. Is to pay attention to how we respond or react in our own life. And are we willing to pivot Pause. Think a different thought. Have a new idea. Something that will generate a higher vibration of consciousness. Mm. Are you willing? So we're going to take that into Alan's song, which is a beautiful reminder of Somewhere. 